Now we will install Ubuntu which we will use for our Elastic Stack. I already downloaded the ISO image which is in my downloads folder. Let's create a new VM in Hyper-V and name it Elk and as usual we will store it in a different location. And generation 1 and uh, let's use a little bit more RAM uh, since Elastic is um, memory intensive and we will connect to the private network and um, we will use 30 gigs of um, storage for Elastic Stack and uh, we will point to the ISO image which we just downloaded and uh, let's finish it off Hmm, we are getting an error. Um, so I was playing with it uh, before recording and I have a same name Elk. So let's go change the name of the Hyper-V instance to Elk like uh, Elk slash Ubuntu. And that should fix that error message. And let's connect to the instance and uh, we can start the install process. So this is Ubuntu 16.04 which is uh, the latest release. Uh, as of this recording. Now we're using Linux uh, for Elastic Stack because um, there are packages available which um, lets us install the Elk Stack very easily. So pick install Ubuntu and uh, we will also download the, imp um, the updates in the third-party software like Flash and uh, which which is helpful in certain scenarios. And uh, let's erase the disk and install Ubuntu Chicago time zone I'm in central most of these Linux installation is pretty simple it's um, more or less similar to Windows uh, where you just have to follow the screen prompts and install so for now I'm going to use login automatically so it's easier to um, work with the Linux instance. I like Ubuntu and also there's another flavor called Linux Mint. Both are very easy to work for uh, Windows um, people and um, I would definitely start with Ubuntu if you are new to Linux. So for uh, Elastic Stack, uh, it's um, just um, copy pasting a few commands and um, it is not complicated. Uh, but I would strongly recommend learning Linux basics if you want to get into security field. Yeah, Ubuntu does come with a lot of uh, free software and um, even if you don't have anything available you can go to the software store and uh, you can find whatever you need and download in Ubuntu. Uh, the installation is complete. Let's um, restart. and after restarting and um, we can go to the full screen mode and um, let's check the IP address and um, you can press the first thing to find the terminal and then um, you can do ifconfig to find the uh, IP address and uh, it is getting um, 1218 which is um, 
which is the IP address, uh, which is one we got from the domain controller, DHCP server. So let's go check it out. So one more thing uh, before we proceed is installing OpenSSH server. So it's easy to um, log on remotely and do our administration install tools. So the way to install SSH is um, you do a sudo apt-get install open SSH server. After installing this, we will see port 22 listening on the system and we should be able to connect to it remotely. So now let's try uh, netstat again. And uh, there you see 22, which is um, a port for SSH server. Let's um, pick a Windows 10 or Windows 10, uh, 7 to log on to the Linux machine. And uh, we will install a tool called PuTTY. Uh, yeah, Windows 10 will not allow us to open Edge browser when you're logged in as an administrator. So let's um, use the Windows 7 system for now and uh, we'll fix that issue later. And uh, let's log on as um, the administrative user so it will be easy for us to install software. So we're going to install PuTTY which is um, a tool for um, logging on to SSH servers and um, it's the only best tool available for Windows. So once we have this tool we don't have to go to the Linux system as often and um, most of the uh, work we can do with this um, remote shell. Just uh, Google for PuTTY and that will be the first hit. And uh, you got to look for um, the Windows MSI version, which will install on our Windows. So let me look through the list to find the MSI file. And uh, okay, finding it uh, hard to find it, but it should be there. Let me go down. Oh, it's right there. I saw it. Okay, it's the one you need, 64-bit. Uh, and uh, it's a small install. Once you download, let's uh, launch it and then uh, follow the prompts. And you should be able to go to uh, the start icon and type putty and then you should find it. We may be able to find using the host name elk. Sometimes it doesn't work on Windows 7 but uh, Windows 10 you don't have to put the full domain but let's uh, give it a shot. Yeah so Windows 7 sometimes you have to put the full fully qualified domain name like elk.xclaris.com. Um, but uh, Windows 10 is um, pretty good in uh, guessing the domain name. So it will add the xclaris.com for you. So let's find the IP address for um, the Elastic Stack so we can connect to it using the IP address instead of the host name. So the IP address of Kubuntu, I believe it is 218. Uh, let's double check that. Yeah, it is right. So it is 218. So we should be able to use the IP address instead of the host name to connect to the ELK stack. Okay, we are able to ping it from our Windows 7 um, because everything is in the same network, the private network, and all of the systems in the private network can communicate with each other.
So let's um, save it and then open it. You will get this prompt, say okay, and uh, type in the uh, the password for Raj, which is the same thing which you use when you installed Lubuntu. So there you go. I mean, you have the shell uh, to the Linux system and you can do everything pretty much from there. And um, you can also do one more thing since we'll be connecting to the Elk stack. Let's uh, fix the IP address or um, I already made the changes. So if you go to the um, the IPv4 settings, I already uh, made um, sure that IP address is always 218. So we don't have to keep looking for it. So I would recommend making the same change on your system. 